Hello everyone, Hyper here and welcome to the Big Dumb Strats video for Mythic Skitra. Same as our other guides, this video will cover general strategy, DPS, healing and tanking aspects of this fight. And if you just want to watch the section that's relevant to you, make sure to check out the timestamps in the comments section. It should be pinned. Also, if you'd rather read the guide than listen to it, you can also check out the written version over on Wowhead, which is linked in the description box. I'm joined by Lozi to talk about tanking and Shampi to cover healing. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's talk about the mythic specific change, which for this fight, it's not really impactful. Basically, whenever you pull the boss, half of your raid will get the purple debuff, the other half will get the orange debuff, which are the clouded and twisted mind debuffs. And for the entire fight, your raid will be split in half. From time to time, your color might change or you might just stay the same color the entire fight. What this really does is it limits the mechanics that you're able to see throughout the fight. So it adds a little bit of communication that is required between the two debuff sides so that you can get through the fight smoothly. As an example, if you have the Clouded Mind debuff, which is the orange one, and your teammate who has the Twisted Mind debuff gets the Shred Psyche debuff on him and then drops the ad, you with the orange debuff will not be able to see and DPS this ad, so only the people with the Twisted Mind debuff will be able to damage it and actually see where it is. So the easiest way to deal with this situation is to simply standardize where everything is placed within the encounter. So you always want to tank the boss in the same spot, you always want to have your melee stack and your range stack in the same spot, you always want to drop the debuff in the same spot, so everything is predictable and you know where things should be even if you're not technically able to see them. The general strategy on this DPS can kind of vary depending on how much damage you're able to do, but basically there are two damage checks that you could try to make. The first one, which is a little bit steeper, is doing each phase one, which is 20% of the boss's health, during only one Shred Psyche debuff. So this means that you need to do 20% of the boss's health while only killing one add and then phasing him to phase two before getting a second one. You most likely will need to drop a healer, especially on early progress to be able to do this, but it can reduce a lot of time spent in the phase and remove a lot of healing required. The second DPS check that you could set for your raid is a little bit more lenient and for this you will most likely want to use an extra healer um, and it's where you will deal with two Shred Psyche adds every single phase one. With this strategy you will be a little bit closer to the enrage time but overall it's a little bit safer to do if your DPS is not quite up to par. Regardless of the strategy that you end up doing, try to avoid having a Shred Psyche add alive whenever you push the boss to phase two because if you have one alive and you need to kill it, then identify the correct image of the boss and kill that, you're going to be spending a lot of time in that second phase and the boss will be gaining a lot of dark ritual stacks. And that can be very dangerous once you get to later phase ones. For positioning in phase ones, we just recommend following the one that we have on the screen right now, where you tank the boss kind of halfway to one of the walls with melee DPS right behind him, and then range DPS about 10 to 15 yards behind the melee. And this will essentially be a safety corridor where your tanks and your range DPS or anyone who is in charge of CCing the images of Absolution will be able to just CC three of them or maybe four. And no matter where you stand on this certain line that we call the safety corridor, you'll be safe. You just don't want to go out uh, too far to the left or the right side because if you're not able to see those images, you will most likely die. With this strategy, we typically always drop the Shred Psyche ad on one of the markers that we placed behind the boss. So we have a marker placed uh, on the left-hand side of the boss and one on the right-hand side behind him. And then whichever marker you drop the Shred Psyche ad on, you want your melee DPS to be on the opposite marker and just keep it consistent and all of your ads should be dropped on that specific marker so the DPS know where to move even if they are not able to see the ad. As far as raid comp goes for Skitra, there's not really a specific raid comp needed here since it's still an early boss. So just bring the standard two tanks and then the healers will depend on if you're trying to push the boss either with one Shred Psyche or two Shred Psyches. So you'll bring three or four. 
the only suggestion I have is make sure that you have some druids, monks, or any other classes that can CC images of absolution fairly easily to create the safety corridor for your raid uh, whenever the wall of ads spawns. This will reduce the difficulty of the encounter by a significant amount because if your raid really lacks those AoE CCs like Mass Entangle or Ring of Peace, you will need to rely on single target CCs that can be a little bit trickier to execute. For DPS, this fight is super straightforward. The way you use your damage cooldowns will depend on what damage checks you're trying to make. If you're aiming to do phase 1s with only one set of Shred Psyche adds, then all of your cooldowns should be focused in those phase 1s, because that is a pretty tight damage check. However, if you're using an extra healer, and you know you will get two Shred Psyche adds no matter what, then you can potentially allocate some cooldowns in the intermission phases or phase 2s uh, to reduce the number of Dark Ritual stacks the boss gains, thus making later phases a little bit easier. One tip that I have in particular for melee DPS is that during the first few phase 1s where the boss is still fairly low on Dark Ritual stacks, you should be able to stay fairly close to the Shred Psyche ad during its Psychic Outburst cast without actually dying. Just move like 10 yards away from it. If your raid is dropping the ad on one leg of the boss, just move to the other leg and pop a light personal cooldown and you should be fine to keep hitting the boss or swap right back to the Shred Psyche ad once you see it. But during later phases where the boss has higher amount of Dark Ritual stacks, you will most likely need to run out to the ranged camp where the healers will also be using a defensive cooldowns such as Spirit Link or dropping barrier to reduce and mitigate that damage. For this fight, you're going to want to bring four healers. And because the healing on this fight is heavily dependent on the amount of damage you can do, healers contributing DPS is especially important. Additionally, because the adds will do increasing amounts of damage throughout the fight, damage reduction cooldowns are exceptionally strong. For these reasons, the most valuable healers are Paladins, Disc Priests, and Shamans. So the main damage mechanic on this fight is going to come from the Shredded Psyche adds. Roughly every 40 seconds in Phase 1, one player is going to get the Shred Psyche debuff. And when that expires, it's going to spawn an ad. That ad's going to cast a spell, and when that finishes, it's going to do a large raid AoE, and then continue to pulse AoE raid damage for as long as that ad is still alive. So you'll want to plan healing cooldowns around these, such that you have them up for the duration that the ad is still alive. So the other main mechanic that's going to affect healers is that while you're in Phase 2, you'll gain stacks of the Dark Ritual debuff, which increases all shadow damage you take, which is all of the damage on this fight. This means that in later Phase 1s, the Shred Psyche adds will be doing a lot more damage, and additional Phase 2s are going to hurt more than the first ones. Because your goal is to have a maximum of 2 adds in Phase 1, you'll be able to rotate frequent cooldowns like Evangelism or Pally Wings, and have those up for the duration of every ad. Ideally, you'll want to phase into Phase 2 without any Phase 1 adds alive, so that you can use that window as a breather to reset cooldowns, and go into Phase 1 again with everything up. And finally, the last minor thing to mention for healers is that there is still some amount of rot damage going on while you're in phase 2, and that damage will scale with the Dark Ritual debuff. So just be prepared for your later phase 2s to do significant amounts of damage. So in tanking Skitra, not too much changes from Heroic. Position the boss facing the wall about 60-70% to 70 of the way towards one side. Make sure you leave enough room behind you for the images to spawn and not instantly kill you. Do tank swaps at no more than 7 or 8 stacks, and try to force an extra swap right around when an ad would spawn, so that stacks disappear before the Psychic Outburst goes off. However, if you end up with a large stack amount when the Psychic Outburst is going off, make sure to use the personal here and move away a little bit, being mindful of the walking wall of images. You and your co-tank will likely be chosen to shot call or quarterback, as we say here in America, in phase two, due to tanks always having different mind debuffs. Once the first tank drops all the markers, the second tank can then call out which ad to kill. At this point, whichever tank can see the images of absolution needs to be vocal if it is safe to proceed or not. If it is not safe, those images need to be killed before moving the raid. And lastly, just make sure to have all the world markers bound along with another separate bind to clear them all. 
Thank you so much for watching this video and if it helped you please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel it means a lot. Thanks to Lozi and Shampi for helping me out and once again if you would like to read the written guide the link is in the description box and the written guide will be updated if there are any changes in strategy um, and we also have the graphics and everything linked in there. Again thank you so much for watching I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.